Mm -hmm. Are we able to see my screen? Yes. So the title of the paper is uh, Sengan, which is um, learning a generative model from a single natural image. The idea behind this paper is taken from the fact that to be able to do uh, a lot of image uh, manipulation tasks uh, that has to do with style transfer, uh, domain transfer, and all of that requires uh, a lot of uh, images to be able to train. But uh, this work uh, uses just a single image to do all of that. And uh, they get a comparable result with um, other architectures, other work that use a lot of images. For instance, in this figure one, what we're seeing here is that on, I don't know if you're able to see my mouse. Can you see my mouse? I'm pointing. Okay, so on this uh, column, you have a single image. And so this is what the model is trained on. And one thing about the, the architecture is that you don't need to do any fine tuning or any modification to the architecture. You just use the same architecture for any kind of image that you want to train on. And you see this uh, uh, equal performance. So here in this first row, this, uh, the model was trained on this single image. And uh, at test time, the model is able to generate different uh, shades and modes that capture the intrinsic characteristics of the uh, training image. And you can see that um, it's, 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 it's awesome. Aside that, it's able to generate in, in different aspect rich, uh, different aspect ratio, maybe 16 by 9, and different sizes. The second example here, you see also, it's able to capture the distribution of the image that the grass are supposed to be on the low, lower part and uh, the sky, and it even uh, capture the characteristics of the birds, different birds, it added more. So everything you are seeing to the right of the first column are the outputs of the model. Okay, so that is the model. So let's go into the architecture before we see more result. So the architecture is shown here in figure four. Now, the idea behind the architecture is has something to do with the progressive grain of gun paper. If you have read that paper, what progressive grain of gun, um, the achievement in that paper is saying that when you, you are training uh, a discriminator and a generator to be able to make the generator to generate realistic images that can fool the discriminator, it is good to do a kind of a progressive uh, scaling. What that means is that if your target is like 256 by 256 resolution image, you can decide to start and, and sample that to maybe a four by four resolution. And that four by four is very close to the noise. So you take a random noise Z and you train your generator to be able to uh, produce a four by four output of the same image that you are targeting. Then your discriminator and generator play the minimize game until they stabilizes. Then once your generator is good at generating a realistic image at that lower resolution, then they have sample it to so maybe you can do the scaling. And I'll talk about that here too, because it has effect on their work. You can scale it maybe by two, or you can scale it maybe by four. So if you're scaling it by two, Maybe you are saying, okay, from four to four, you are now making it 16 by 16. Or if you are scaling it by four, you are now saying from four to four, you are now making it 64 by 64. And you continue like that until you reach your desired uh, resolution. So what is happening in this figure four is this. You have a pyramid of uh, the GAN, the Generative Adversary Network. So you have the generator and you have the discriminator. First, you sample random noise ZN, 
and you feed that into the generator, you then sample, like I said, the your target, the the image to the same size, uh, to the lower size that you desire, or which will be the same thing with that of the input to the generator. And you train the generator until it is good enough to be able to uh, generate uh, a realistic image that will fool the discriminator. You can see the pipeline, the X bar N so shows the fake image generated by the generator. And the X N here, if you can see my mouse, is the that sampled original image. Both of them are fed into the discriminator until the discriminator is able to uh, differentiate uh, or either be food until the discriminator is food. Now, one interesting thing about their work, which make it a uh, very, very uh, a breakthrough, is actually the best paper uh, for that conference, uh, was that in order to learn the internal statistics of the input image, they didn't just uh, allow the discriminator just to predict the entire image as either fake or real. What the discriminator does is like related to what you have in YOLO, that is breaking the entire image into like cell and I agree, they call it patches. And it will take like a patch of that generated image and the discriminator will decide, is this patch from the real or from the fake? I don't know if you're getting what I'm trying to say. It's illustrated in this uh, yellow place. So that's like a box, a patch. So the discriminator is not predicting the whole image. <coughs> Excuse me. The discriminator is not predicting the whole image at every point in time. It's like a sliding window, a patch around the generated image. And that is what the discriminator tried to detect and predict whether it's coming from the fake or from the real. By doing so, it helps the discriminator to be able to learn the, uh, the spatial structure of the image which you will see the effect of that in, in, in some examples. So once this is good at this level, then they now pass the generated uh, image. This is X bar. It is passed to the next level and they upscale the noise and they added, they upscale the stable result from the lower level. They upscale it and add it to the, uh, the upscaled noise and they continue the training. This is also done sampled. The original image is done sampled to that, which you can see here, this is the original image. The fake image is the one that has the X, the bar. So the process continues with the generator generating and uh, adding up to the discriminator and the discriminator does the patch-wise um, validation, like uh, trying to verify whether the patch is coming from the fake or from the real until they get to the last level. Now, there are some details. Excuse me. <coughs> I don't know what's happening to my voice. Um, sorry about that. There are some details uh, about uh, the training level at the lowest uh, level, at this lowest level, in that one of the problem you have with um, uh, uh, generating uh, a realistic image that will carry the same distribution as the input image is uh, like divergence. For me, it's the simplest way I can put, put it. That is, it is possible that your generator will be generating an image, but it will not resemble the input. So in order to be able to avoid that, they introduce another loss function, which we call the reconstruction loss, such that the generator is forced to generate a new image that is in the same distribution as the input image. That's the best I can uh, put it. So essentially, that is what is happening in, in their architecture. Now, some other important thing here, okay, this, the generator is five convolutional neural network. Uh, Five layers of count net. Um, okay. Okay, this is the construction, the reconstruction laws I mentioned, which is just an L1 norm. So, what is happening in this figure five here is 
you take the original image and you take the output of the generated uh, of the generator and you try to uh, see how close or how far is the generated image on the gun uh, compared to the input. Now, what they did here is that you will see here you have the zero. So when N is less than N, the capital N, as you can see in this figure, the capital N is the final, uh, okay, it's this stage. This is the capital N. So when N is less than N, the, the small letter N is less than N, they did not do uh, any kind of reconstruction to the best of my understanding here. But when N is equals to N, that is when they actually did the reconstruction to make sure that the generated image by the generator is actually close to the input image. Okay. Of course, what we're having in this figure four here is the the general uh, GAN minimax logs function, which is to make sure the generator generates a realistic image that can fool the discriminator. Uh, all right. So these are more results that you can see, but quickly before showing their own results, I would like to share uh, because I use it in my own work too. So I would like to quickly share it for us to see that. I don't know if you're able to see this figure too. I don't know what is showing on your hand. Did you see the other ones that I share? Let me stop sharing and share them. Yeah. Did you see the this, the insulator? No, no, I can't. No, I can't. Okay. So I use it in my work. I trained with just one damage insulator to experiment with. And uh, you can see the 3641.jpg is the training image that I used. And the other ones in PNG are the generated uh, fake images. You can see the different images as they are generated, which really capture uh, the damage uh, concept. So those are different images as I scroll through. I don't know if, uh, if it's plain, as you're seeing what I'm seeing. So it's three, you see the three, you see the number four generated images, and you can see it's actually showing damages, concept of damages in the generated images. And this, to me, will be very good for data augmentation, especially where you have um, insufficient data to balance up in training. So, so that's that. So we generated like 50 images of that, and all of them, I can visually recognize them as damage insulators. And they were uh, very, very uh, sharp and very clear. And another thing is it took like less than maybe four hours to be able to train the, the model. Uh, that's, that's, that's awesome as compared to other grand, as compared to other grand model. Okay, so the other result, I'm sharing the other result. The other result is the usage on on motion and i want to go to that that one is very very interesting uh where's the one on motion uh, and 
the motion. Okay, so it's in figure two. The one on the right, this is the animation. So they trained on this first one and uh, they created different effects, different animation. And you could, if you check the project website, you will see a link to that video. Uh, it's just as if there is a, like a thunderstorm and that was very cool. And uh, there are a number of other works they use it for, uh, harmonization, super resolution. In this super resolution, what's happening here is that you could crop a portion of the input image and it will reconstruct it. That is, you crop the portion of the input image, your training image. So in this second row, that's what you send into your, uh, at inference time, at test time, you send into your network and it reproduces uh, that particular portion with upscaled and very good resolution. Okay, now uh, something interesting is in this figure eight. In figure eight, what is happening here is because you have the different levels of the of the uh, GAN pyramid, they discover that if you uh, inject your input image at a n at n. So what's happening in this figure eight is you have the output of the generated image when during the training you then sampled your training image to this level when n equals to n. And you see some wild things here like you have a zebra that has five legs. Okay. But they discover that when you feed in your image at n equals to n minus one and uh, n minus two, you begin to see that the model preserves the texture. Uh, it, it preserves the, the spatial content of your input image, but changes the texture. As you can see, you will see that the texture of the zebra was is quite different from the input image. You see that it's like it's uh is an horizontal format. So it changes just the texture. And that's another interesting work in another paper which they were trying to examine why uh, neural networks are being biased to, to texture rather than capturing the spatial resolution of the of the input image. That one is another paper. In this figure nine, that's the scale I was talking about. And it also has to do with texture and the global structure of the input image. You have this training image, uh, which is this training image, but they discover that when they use two scales, that are just two scales, you see that the generated output is just capturing the texture of the input. But as they increase the number of scales in the training, then the model is able to capture the different structure or that are present in the in the input image. As you can see, the structures are coming out uh, gradually as the scales are increased. They also use a mesomechanical mechanical truck to be able to do some quantitative analysis. And uh, I think that's about all I have to say.